Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 21 of Book 5. Now before we begin, we need to look at a ratio, ex I can't pronounce this so you'll just have to read it, and a perturbed proportion ratio. In this ratio, we have A to B is equal to D to E, B to C is equal to E to F, which implies that A to C is equal to D to F. And if you recall, that was the proposition from, that was Proposition 20. Now a pertur perturbed proportion is instead of having A to B is equal to D to E, we have A to B is equal to E to F, and B to C is equal to D to E. And then the result is the same as before. So again, A, B, C are proportional as D, E, and F. However, A, B is equal to E, F, B, C is equal to D, E. So you can see that these two have been swapped. So that is a perturbed proportion. All right, so what actually is this proposition about? Well, we're starting with a perturbed proportion. So A to B is equal to E to F. B to C is equal to D to E. So again, these two are the same proportion as those two, and these two are the same proportional as those two. And if this is the initial conditions, then if A is bigger than C, D is bigger than F. If A is equal to C, D is equal to F. And finally, if A is less than C, that implies that D is also less than F. So let's start. Here are our initial conditions. Again, these two proportions are equal and these two proportions are equal. So let's assume that A is larger than C. Well, A to B would be greater than C to B. A to B would be greater than C to B according to Proposition 8. Now B to C is equal to D to E, so the inverse is also true according to Proposition 13. CB is equal to E to D. Now if AB is greater than C to B and C to B is equal to E to D, then A to B is greater than E to D. Just putting in the substitution right there. A to B is equal to E to F. A to B is also greater than E to D. So therefore, E to F is greater than E to D. Well, if E to F is greater than E to D, then D has got to be larger than F, according to Proposition 10. So now that we have assumed that A being larger than C results in the proof that D would also be larger than F. Or in more generic terms, if we tried the same logic for A is equal to C and ran through the same logic, or if A was less than C and ran through the same logic, we could come up with the more generic statement that if this is true, then if A is bigger than C, D is bigger than F, and so on and so forth. You might notice a similarity between proof in this proposition and the proof in the previous one, Proposition 20. So I've just decided to put them side by side. Here's the proof for the perturbed proportional, and that is this proposition. And this is the proof for Proposition 20. I put them side by side so you can compare them. I'm not going to go through it myself, but of course you can always just pause the video if you care to stare at it some. So, just in conclusion, if we have the perturbed proportional, in other words, A to B is equal to E to F, and B to C is equal to D to E, then we have this relationship here where if A is greater than C, D is greater than F, and so on and so forth. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.